Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. Today we'll be beginning with uh, the very beginning of CIE A-level chemistry, code 9701. And the name of the lesson is Atomic Structure. Today we'll just be covering the very basics of atomic structure, uh, a small recap of what you did in IDCSE, uh, an introduction to orbitals and the filling of orbitals. Right. So this is the electron, no, not the electron, sorry, the atom the atom that you've been introduced to during your IGCSE years. This model, if I'm not mistaken, is called the Bohr model, where uh, there's a central nucleus, which has majority of the mass, and it has protons and neutrons. Protons positively charged and neutrons have no charge, relatively. And uh, this is orbited by electrons in their respective shells. And this is the first shell, this is the second shell, and so on, right? Now, this model is for simplicity and it is used in IGCAC. However, in A-levels, we use a slightly more complex, a more accurate model of the electrons orbiting the nucleus. Uh, and there is more accurate models available and more details as well, but we'll just be covering what uh, the syllabus requires you to cover. Okay. So unlike the electrons in actuality don't uh, just orbit the nucleus, in shells right not like they're not bound to this trajectory they inhibit they inhabit orbitals and these are regions where electrons can occur uh, and if you want a more like like uh, a visual representation of it you can check out a video of how an electron occupies an orbital and there's three orbitals that you need to know of uh, s p d and there's also an f orbital, but that's that really that like it appears in your syllabus. Anyway, uh, electrons occupy via energy levels. Now let's I'll I'll just uh, make it a bit easier. Let's. So when you're writing for 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 example, okay, uh, this is helium, right? In the in your IDCC years, what you used to write its electron configuration is two, right? As in, there's two electrons that occupies the, like the shell, the first shell, right? And it's a noble gas. Uh, another example would be um, fluorine, right? So fluorine has nine electrons. And how would you write nine in its electron configuration in the IGCSC? You'd write it as curly bracket two, and then there's seven other electrons, right? Now this is acceptable in IGCSC, but in A-levels, we prefer to write it in terms of orbitals. Orbitals, this is the word. And uh, I'll get to filling the orbitals later, but for now, just accept that there's something called orbitals. And in, in, in this case, what you would write, how you'd express this in terms of orbitals would be 1s2, 2s2, uh, uh, pardon, 2s2 and 2p5, right? So there's two electrons, two electrons, that's four, and plus five, that's nine electrons in total, right? Now, I'll get to how this works, okay? But before that, I'll just tell you, I'll label it for you. So for instance, there's 2p5, right? This is the principal quantum shell. Quantum shell and what i mean by principal quantum shell is, is for instance this is fluorine right this is the first shell and this is the second shell right so you see that this electron that we are trying to describe here it would be in the second shell so this is the second principal quantum shell is the same as this the second okay this p is the subshell the subshell so even within the principal quantum shells, there's other things known as the subshells. And the orbital is like which like which variant of the subshell it occupies. And in P, there's Px, Py, and Pz. We'll get into that in a bit, but just accept this for now, that this is the principal quantum shell number and this is the subshell, okay? Now, this is how the filling works okay there's rules to, no wait before going on to filling let's um 
think about uh, the energy levels, okay? This is energy levels, okay? This is energy. And yeah, let, let, let's just leave that for now. So the lowest energy level is 1, right? Obviously 1 and S. The second lowest is 2S. The third will be 2P. And then you'll move on to 3S. And then 3P. Okay, and so on. There's an exception here, but we'll get into that in a bit. And each orbital can occupy can have two electrons, a pair of electrons. Pair of electrons. And this is very important as electrons they normally exist in pairs. And to denote an electron, well, electrons have spin. So one, like if there's this is an electron, okay, it'll spin either in this direction or it'll spin in this direction, okay. Uh, and it's known as like a positive or a negative spin. And each, like electrons that have opposite spins occupy one orbital. So this has the spin one direction, this is the other direction spin, or this can also be denoted as this, and this fills an orbital. The same for 2s, the same for 2p, and so on. You get the idea, right? Now, the way to fill the orbitals is something similar to this. It goes from 1s, okay, and then 2s, 2p, and 3s, 3p, 3d, and then 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, and so on. Okay, and this is how the filling happens. From the after the first after 1s is filled with electrons, it goes to 2s. After 2s is filled, it goes to 2p. After 2s is filled, uh, 2p is filled, it goes to 3s. After 3p is filled, it goes to 3p. After 3p is filled, it does not go to 3d, but instead it goes to 4s and that is uh, like a unique case this is where things start to get like out of control and from 4s it goes to 3d then 3d to 5 3d to 4p and then from 4p to 4d if i'm not mistaken no 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 it's not from 4d it's 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 from 4p to 5s and then from 5s to 4d and so on yeah like that so that's the way uh, electron filling works so first this will fill be this will be filled with two this will be filled with two this will be filled with six and then two six ten and so on and each time like in each specific subshell the number of orbitals increases by two so for there's s there's two orbitals okay for p this is s for p there's one one plus two right sorry not two orbitals. this is a single orbital only there's only one orbital for p there is one plus two that's three orbitals right for d there is two or a three and then plus two right so plus two and there's five orbitals and for f and so on now you don't need to know much about f it's mainly just s p and d you just need to know that the f orbital exists and that it doesn't end at d. There's also uh, f, g, h, but we don't need to get into that. Yep. Anyway, so now you also have to know the shape of the orbitals. The shape of the orbitals. These are important and they're not only asked in as, but they're also asked in a2. So the, sh the s orbital shape is very simple. This is very, very simple. So let's say this is x, this is y, and this is z, right? The s orbital is simply a circle. This is the s orbital shapes, but shapes. This is the s orbital shape, all right? Now P, recall that P has not one orbital, but one plus two is three. So P has three orbitals. And the three orbitals are X, Y, and Z. So the shape of a P orbital is just like a lobe, like a lobe like this, yeah? So, one p orbital would be p the p orbitals are p x p y and p z okay so the p z would be something like this p this is p z 
Yeah. Py would be something like x y. See, py would be something like this part in the bad drawing, and px would be something like this, a lobe on each side. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and now we'll get on to filling the orbitals. Okay, let's get on to filling the orbitals. So, for instance, uh, let's say we have, let's take a more complicated, like not, not too simple. So, we have sodium, Na, right? The electron, the proton number of sodium is, if I'm not mistaken, 11. And, uh, well, mass number here is uh, irrelevant. It doesn't really matter when you're filling orbitals. So, two rules. I think there's, no, not two. I think there's three rules. Okay, anyway, I'll, I'll just get along with it. So the rules for orbital filling. So the first rule is that each each uh, orbital contains a pair of orbitals, okay? So each orbital contains a pair of electrons that we covered earlier. So each orbital has a pair of electrons which is an opposite spins. Okay. Uh, and the second rule is that the electrons will fill the lower energy orbitals first, which is basically that uh, the diagram that I showed you that it goes from 1s to 2s and then 2p and then that like that. All right. You have to know how to fill orbitals like in that order. So electrons will first fill lower energy orbitals okay uh, and the third rule is that which is better known as the Hans principle uh, that electrons will first fill the degen degenerate orbitals and this rule is very important they can question you on it often so um, okay will first fill E will fill degenerate orbitals first okay this is important so this na right so the electronic configuration configuration of na would be so it has 11 electro electrons so first it'll fill the 1s orbital so 1s2 right and then 2s2 okay 2p6 so it fills the second shell fully and then 3s so 2 2 2 2 2 6 that's 10 so 10 11 minus 10 is 1 so 3s1 okay and the way you'd represent this diagram like uh, in the boxes is something like this so this is 1s right this is a box two electrons and then 2s two electrons 1s to 2s2 and uh 2p right 2p in this case it's 6 so like this and then 3s just a single electron right now what do I mean by this third rule? okay so for this I have to take uh, uh, an example that has like an incomplete piece option so a correct example would be hmm, Okay, let's say nitrogen, all right? Nitrogen has seven electrons. It has a 14 mass number, but that is irrelevant. So, yeah, the electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, so that's four. Seven minus four is three, so 2p3, right? So how would you represent this diagrammatically? So there's 1s2, and then there's 2s2, and then there is 2p3. Three, right? And uh, you'd think normally that you can fill this in either way, like you can fill it like this, or uh, that you can fill it like this, or something of the sort. But if you fill it the second way, which is like this, 
you'd be wrong. And that is because of the third rule, the Hunt's principle, that electrons will first fill the degenerate orbitals. By degenerate, I mean the ones that are empty. Okay, so when electrons are spinning in a pair, the reason for this is that when electrons are spinning in a pair, like oppositely pair, uh, electrons recall that they are negatively charged. So before electrons filling the same orbitals, where they face repulsion against each other, they'll first fill where there is least resistance, i.e. another orbital. Okay, so in this case, it would be like this, like this, and like this. So we'll first fill the empty orbitals. Uh, another example, let's say oxygen. So there's eight, we have one S2, right? One S2, two S2, two P4. That's one S, and then there's two S, and then there's two P, right? So you have to first fill the degenerate orbitals one by one. And there's four electrons, right? Now you're allowed to like put the second electron, the opposite least charge, the opposite spin electron in any of the orbitals. So like this, okay? Or you could put it here. It doesn't make a difference. It's pretty much the same. Or you could put it here. It doesn't make a difference. But it's generally preferred to put it in the first, like from left to right, yeah? And that's the rule of electron orbital filling. Uh, that is all for the new chemist like new the introduction to the basics of atomic structure uh, in the next video we will be covering uh, the ionization energies and the factors that impact them if you have any doubts please do leave them in the comment section below